Are you looking for a church where love flows because God is in control? A church where God is really real? Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you
these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to with thee which all see your called in one body. And be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all these things in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give it thanks to God in the Father. Colossians 3, 14 through 17. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. This is a day the Lord has made, and I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the Lord. We honor today, tonight for our being here, and we give honor to Bishop Frank Anderson, Bishop Robert Rudolph, Bishop Jerome Strickland, and Bishop Perry Reed, and to Emeritus Bishop Donnie Lindsay, First and Second Administrative Assistants, Williams and Williams, and to all elect ladies, we greet each of you delegates to this 67th annual St. Women's Convention Crusade. Hallelujah. We have come into this house, gathered in his name, to worship him. Tonight, on behalf of our jurisdictional state women's supervisor, Mother Jeanette Watkins, the administrative facilitators, and the entire board of district missionaries, we welcome each of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As you know, the women's department of the Church of God in Christ consists of many ministries. Some of you may not know, but it consists of Sunshine Band, Purity, YWCC, the CWC, Minister's Wives, Prayer and Bible Band, Home and Farm Mission, Sewing Circle, and so on. You may not know that, but these things are in your, supposed to be in your local churches. Hallelujah. These ministries provide teaching, training, and ministry opportunities to enhance the local church. The Women's Department will continue to play an important role in the Church of God in Christ worldwide, as it is the largest department in the Church of God in Christ nationally and internationally. Our motto is world evangelism, better homes, better schools, better communities for a better world. Saints, friends, and delegates, you cannot afford to miss not one night of these services of the 2022 Women's Convention. You're invited to join and participate in the praise and worship of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that all of your spiritual needs be met on this week. We pray is that when you leave this place on Friday night, you will be revived, refreshed, renewed, and rejuvenated. May God continue to be and bless you. Well, come on, let's bless the Lord. Come on, let you know, let you know, let you know, let you know that you are a child of the Most High God. Come on, put those blessed hands together and give God some praise. Amen. Are there any hallelujahs in the house tonight? Amen, amen. We greet you tonight, amen, amen. Let me just uh, say we thank God, amen, for our honorable bishop tonight, yeah. amen, the bishop, Frank Jefferson Anderson, Anderson Jr., amen. God bless you, amen, Bishop Strickland tonight, amen. Thank God for Bishop Rudolph tonight, amen, and the Bishop Harry. Come on, let's celebrate these two. Amen, and the entire staff of Amen. Administrative, amen, and superintendents, amen, that are on the podium tonight, amen. We certainly thank God, amen, for the women's department tonight. Amen. Amen. We're back. We're back. Amen. The church is coming back together. Amen. And we thank 
God for amen for our saintly mother tonight. Amen. Can we give God a praise for Mother Jeanette Abraham Watkins tonight? Amen. Where would we be without the women's department? My God, my God. I belong to that church. Amen. Thank God for Mother Henderson. Come on, thank God for her. Mother and entire cabinet, amen, that is in the corner tonight, amen. God bless each and every one of you, amen. On behalf of the Greater New Bible Way Church family, we greet you tonight. Listen, I know Mother don't need any, amen, back seat mats tonight. She don't need any side seat clouds. But she needs some people that's going to praise God tonight. Huh? In other words, we don't need any spectators. We need to participate. That's all I'm trying to say. Amen. Let's enjoy Jesus. Amen. There are a few people, amen, that are in the house. Amen. From Greater New Bible Way. So if you find yourself, you have a need, amen, and you need a direction, amen, amen, just find one of us. We will certainly help lead you and guide you to where you're trying to get to. This week, amen, we have just pronounced, amen, this 22nd and Franklin, amen, Holy Ghost, amen, corner this week. Amen. It is our desire to see somebody saved, sanctified, and filled and baptized with the precious Holy Ghost. Amen. All of us saints here, somebody got to give that life.
house. God bless you and your first lady. I also, I heard uh, Bishop Rudolph, Bishop Strickland, Bishop Reed, I honor you, man of God. I'm so sorry as well that I didn't call. I think Lady Reed is here. You guys, I'm, I'm learning. We, we got a multitude up in here. But I don't want to never open up your body. And I don't want to never feel like I'm disrespecting nobody. I know how to do protocol, but y'all, I got forgot. I'm so sorry.
Amen. We are back. Sunshine Bank. We are back. It is so good to see the sea. Yellow, black, and white. We are going to go forth and we are going to have our first uh, selection by the North Little Rock District.
his strength.
First, I give an honor to God and to Bishop Anderson and to Supervisor Mother Walker and to Superintendent Robin Robinson and to District Men Missionary Evangelist June Joseph. I'm gonna and to our elder, our pastor elder.
God. Thank you, everybody, for your prayers. Thank you, because without it, I don't think I would be here today. And I thank God for Sister Fuller Ellis. I thank God for Sister Ruby Henry, who has stood so vibrant in my life.
major areas of purity. There are three major areas, areas of purity. Thoughts, words, and actions. The word of God says, let the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalms 19 and 14. These things are interconnected but separate. Your words. Your word is your mind. It speaks to who you are and reflects to who is inside you. Beware of what you say because words are seeds and when you sow them, you reap them. Mark 11 23 says, He shall have whatsoever he says. Your word determine your worth. What you say determines what you have, either positive or negative. Watch your words and never allow negative words to come out of your mouth. So keep speaking by faith what the scripture has declared for you. Matthew 12, verse 34 through 37. You brood of vipers, how can you who are... <laughs> How can you who are evil say anything good? Let the mouth speak of what is full of A good man brings good things with the goodness stored in him, and an evil man brings evil things with the evilness stored in him. But I tell you that everyone must give account of judgment on the day of judgment for every empty word that is spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and for by your words you will be condemned. God weighs your actions. Your attitude determines your altitude in life and how high you will go. Do not wait on someone to run after you before you do what is right. Refuse the evil and choose the good, no matter your situation. Give thanks, and your future is guaranteed in Christ. You must feed on the word of God always, and it will keep you from sin. Renew your mind and guard your heart against dwelling on wrong things. Luke 6, verses 36. And walk, 46, and walk call me Lord, Lord, and do not think that's what y'all say. John 1st, 5-3. This is the loving God that we keep, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not generous. Your thoughts. Many people believe that their thoughts don't matter, so as long as they don't actually practice evil deeds. But pure thoughts are essential to a pure life because our thoughts determine what we say and do. Pure thoughts lead to pure words and pure deeds. Your thoughts are, are important. As invisible as thoughts are, they are so powerful, they define your living. The devil will always bring things to you, so sanitize your thoughts and focus on the positive things in life. Be careful of what you see, be mindful of what you read, and be careful what you read. Let's go around right here and see God. Matthew 5 and 9. On tonight, we hope that not only the purity will acknowledge and practice the three major areas of purity, but everyone that is present, remember to guard your thoughts, your words, and your actions. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, 
Neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious in anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Saints, we are living in a time where anxiety and mental health issues are very common, especially in people my age. Statistics show that nearly one in three teens, 13 through 18, will experience an anxiety disorder. If you or one of the people you know are going through this, please reach out to a Christian counselor. But first, seek the Lord in His guidance, because in the scriptures, He is telling us that He'll take care of everything for us. And when we give Him our concerns and worries, He will take care of those too. Let me give you an example. I love to play volleyball. I was just blessed to play in the AAU Junior National Volleyball Tournament in Orlando, Florida. My team got ninth place out of 191 teams in our division. I played two positions, either middle blocker or right side hitter. Now the thing about being a hitter is that it's exciting. It's what people come to see. Everyone wants to have a fast spike that gives a quick score, and no one on the other side of the net can touch it. But what people don't realize is that being a middle blocker means that you have to sacrifice for your team. You may not always be able to spike because you're blocking the opposing side's hits and protecting your team. So Saints, when things come at us from opposing teams, we may all want to be hitters. So we start feeling anxiety and pressure to get in a position to hit. But what we forget is that we have the best middle blocker. So, so when we put our trust in him, when we pray to him, when we petition him, he swats our problems down before they get to us. When jealousy comes our way, he swats it down. When anger comes our way, he swats it down. When the pressure comes our way, he swats it down. Before any hurt, harm, or danger begin to affect my life, he swats it down. And that is why the Lord is the best middle blocker. Thank you. Christ's purity class. 
was established by Mother Eleanor C.S. Johnson in, of Michigan in 1926. She created this, this class with the purpose of preserving the generation of young men and young women ages 12 through 19 with a high moral standard of living. The world was, the world was and is suffering from a continual moral decline against the basic principles of Christian living that the church has been upholding. The purity class is designed to help keep young people focused on these true values and high standard of living Christian virtues with three principles, cleanliness, righteousness, and holiness in the home, in the community, in school, and in the church. The purity class is unique and unlike any other organization. The purity class not only teaches youth how to be pure, chaste, and holy, but purity offers many interactive programs and activities specifically designed for fellowship with other Puritans in an environment conducive to building the purity class and providing instructions in the Church of God in Christ by allowing Puritans to serve in leadership positions within the purity class using the learn by doing method. Some activities include workshops, contests, Bible Bowl, the convocations, both state and national, baking, sewing, community service, drama, and ring ceremonies, to name a few. Missionary Watkins and Mother Anderson, you know that we've been in a COVID pandemic for the past three years and unable to meet. But we are here tonight to perpetuate our church's purity class teaching that in that we embark upon a new beginning for that cause. We are presenting you with a gift representing a new beginning. The, the lotus blossom is revered as a symbol of purity, rebirth, self-rejuvenation, and spiritual enlightenment. We hope that we hope that when you look through, at this gift through the years, you will remember the year 2022. The year that the second jurisdiction purity class came together under your leadership once again.
You need to understand that it is okay to wait for marriage. But no one is judging you if you did or if you did not. But you need to realize that spirits travel and they are real. You do not want these unwanted spirits following and tormenting you. You need to ask God for clarity and the spirit of discernment to open your heart and your eyes to what is surrounding you and your space. This also goes into mental purity. You need to be mindful with who and what you are around because spirits are real and they come to those who are spiritually sweet. For me, I am very in tune with what my intuition says and when the spirit tells me to move, I move. Or I have to leave certain places because my spirit did not align with the atmosphere. God has recently been dealing with me through dreams and visions and has been showing me different things that have happened. I have I used to watch horror videos talking about demons and people being tormented by evil spirits in hotels and houses, you name it, I have heard it and watched it. I became severely afraid of the dark and had to continue to look over my shoulder. God showed me a vision on Christmas of 2020 of this evil spirit filling my bedroom. I could not move and it was watching me. I was out of body watching myself almost die at the hands of Satan. From that day on, I stopped watching those videos That's and it. watching them, I became mentally calm. <laughs> also open my eyes and spirits can come from anything. Music and music videos, books, TV shows, clothing logos, everything. I keep this as a reminder Obedience is better than compromise. Okay. This people of God is what mental purity can do for you. It helps you clear your mind of what is important, which is the role is being a role model for our dying world. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1 says, Having therefore these promises, yeah. dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness, which is the fear of God. Yeah. God can unveil your consumption, giving you a quick wake-up call. He is telling us that we need to wise up and realize that our world is on fire, but we don't want to be caught up in the flames. In today's society, social media plays a huge part in what I say is physical purity. As women and men of God, we are set on a standard that is not like everyone else. You can be beautiful and handsome and elegant and point. Everyone is not meant to follow, but that is okay. This means taking care of yourself and your body, yeah. eating healthy, yeah. and getting rid of those toxins that are addictive. Yeah. That wine bottle can wait. Yeah. That vape can, pen can wait. Yeah. Our, our bodies are his temple, and we are to take care of them. Yeah. We, have, we are a part of him, and so if we hurt him, ourselves, we are ultimately hurting him. If we live honorably, he will bless us with fruitful and healthy lives. Yeah. If you don't let these temporary bodies, why not pay him back? They are God's home. We have to continually update and revise them until they are in perfect condition in accordance with him. As I am coming to a close, as people of God, we are to live up to God's calling and what he wants us to be. We are like Apostle Paul. We were once dirt that had been molded, watered, and burned into pure gold. And it is never too late to become pure gold. Thank you for my
Thank you for everything that you've done, oh God. Everything that you are doing and everything that you will continue to do, God. I pray that you will speak through me, that it won't be late in speaking, God, but it will be you speaking through me. Have your way. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Amen. The house has already been addressed, but I would like to give honor to God who was ahead of my life. To my parents uh, and my first lady and my pastor, Elder and Sister Smith. To our bishop and his wonderful wife. And to Mother Jeanette Abraham Watkins. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I do not prepare to be before you long. I'm just going to go ahead and pull up my scripture. I am coming from Job chapter 1, verses 20 through 22. And it reads, Then Job arose and rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped, and said, Naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked I shall return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. If you will bear with me just for a few moments, coming from the topic of you've been suffering in the waiting, but now you're coming out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, the book of Job simply probes the physical, psychological, and even the spiritual depth of suffering. Yeah. Now, a lot of times when people first hear the story of Job, their minds are often led to the question of why. This book is the first document in the history to take seriously the question of why bad things happen to good people and solely on how a just God can allow suffering on those who are innocent. Now for you to understand verses 20 through 22, let me just back it up a little bit and tell you a story. I'm going to give you a brief introduction of our protagonist. Now, if you look back on the scriptures, verses 1 and 2 lets us know that Job was perfect, blameless, and upright. He feared God and turned away from evil. And in verse 8, God himself said, there was no one in the earth like him. And if you go to verse 3, it familiarizes us with his possessions and his wealth. It lets us know that he had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and the Bible says he had a great household, meaning he had many, many servants. So now that you've received a brief introduction of our main character, let's proceed with the story, shall we? Now in verse 6, it says, one day, somebody say, one day. One day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also with them. And the Lord said, Satan, where are you coming from? And Satan says, oh, just roaming around, walking back and forth. Then the Lord said, have you tried my servant Job? Job who was upright. Job who was blameless. Job who was perfect in the sight of the Lord. Job who was minding his own business. He said, have you tried my servant Job? And if you go to verse 9, Satan, also known as the devil, sometimes called Lucifer, said, does Job fear God for naught? Now that is the King James Version, but let me simplify it a little bit with the Good News Bible. It says, would Job worship you if he got nothing out of it? It says, Job is only righteous because he is wealthy and comfortable. You have always protected him and his family and everything he owns. You bless everything he does, so his loyalty is conditional. But now, suppose you take away everything he has, he will curse you. So the Lord did not have to argue with the devil. He said, everything that he has is in your power, but don't you dare lay a hand on Job. The Bible says that Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Now we are down to verse 14, and it begins by telling us a servant ran to Job, and he said, we were plowing with the oxen, and the donkeys were in a nearby field, and the Sabines came and stole them all and killed all of your servants, and I was the only one who escaped to tell you. And while he was yet speaking, light, another servant came, and he said, lightning struck your sheep and your shepherds and killed them all, but I was the only one who escaped to tell you. Somebody said, while he was yet speaking, 
while he was yet speaking, another servant came up and he said three band of Chaldean raiders attacked and took the camels and killed all of your servants and I was the only one who escaped to tell you. And while he was yet speaking, there came yet another servant and he said your children were feasting and drinking in your brother, big brother's house and a storm swept in her and the wind blew her and blew the house down her and it killed them all and I was the only one who escaped to tell you. So now we are down to verses 20 through 22. Not one, not two, not three, but four tragedies. He chose all at one time. He didn't question God's decision. He did not challenge God's authority. He didn't say, God, why are you allowing me to go through? I'm upright. I'm blameless. I'm perfect in your sight. I go to church every Sunday. I pay my tithes every Sunday. I go to Sunday school. I don't drink and I don't smoke. No, he said nothing. The Bible says he got up. He rent his clothes. He shaved his head. He fell to the ground. And he began to worship the Lord. I believe Pastor Brown spoke and said, Is my prayer, has my praise been approved by God? I think it's safe to say that Job's praise was approved by God. You see, sometimes you gotta praise God on the level of your trial. Because if your trial is up here, you can't praise God down here. If you're going through some tough times, you gotta get radical with God and praise Him on the level of your trial. But the story does not end there. In chapter 2, when the angels came again to present themselves to the Lord, Satan came again with them. And the Lord said, Did you notice my servant Job? You have taken away everything he has, and yet he still worships you. He said, I let you attack him without reason, and he still has yet proven to be faithful. Then Satan says, A person will give up everything to live, but suppose you touch his body, he will curse you to your face. So the Lord didn't have to argue with Job because he had confidence and faith in Job and his character. So the Lord said, okay, he is in your power, but don't you dare take his life. Ooh, hallelujah. So Satan caused boils and sores to break out all over his body. The Bible says he has sores and boils from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. So at this point, Job had lost everything, even his health. And he was waiting on the Lord, but not only was he waiting, he was suffering while in the midst of his waiting. Listen, it's hard to wait because it's that sense of uncertainty, because you don't know how God is going to do it. You don't know when God is going to do it. Matter of fact, you don't know what God is going to do. So not only is it hard to wait, but it's even harder to suffer while you wait. Now let me take you down to chapter 42. <clears throat> Verses 10, 12, and 13. It says, Then after Job had prayed for his three friends, the Lord made him prosperous again and gave him twice as much as he had before. The Lord blessed the last part of Job's life even more than he had blessed the first. Job owned 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand female donkeys. And he was the father of seven sons and three daughters. See, Job suffered, but God gave him double for his trouble. But see, when people talk about the story of Job, they want to put so much emphasis on how God gave Job double for his trouble. But that, my friend, is not the significance of the story. The Bible says Job was an upright man. He was blameless and perfect in the sight of God. But it's easy to be upright when things are going right. But can you be holy when things are broken? Can you maintain your sanctified character even in the midst of your storm? Can you worship God even in the midst of your trial? Listen, I'm about to take it home. You've been suffering and waiting for a long There's no dirt 
you suffer. They watch you struggle. They watch your car be repossessed. They watch your house go into foreclosure. They watch your money run low. But when you come out, there will be no need for an announcement. So my pastor just preached this two Sundays ago. He said, your pain is connected to your promise. Into it, until we're soaked yes. in the ladder. 